So when Jesus says, some fell among thorns, remember the story, the parable of, of the seed, right? So the, the seeds, the first part falls upon the wayside, and then some falls upon a rocky ground, and it grows up, but it has no root, and it dies. And then it says, some falls among, among the thorns, and the thorns choke it, okay? What are the thorns? What that represents is, okay, the seed of the gospel, that is, someone tells, the, it, this is talking about in the first century, and it applies to us today, but the se it's secondary application, but the primary application that Jesus was talking about was, here are the Pharisees, here are the Jews in the time of Christ, the gospel comes to them, which is salvation by grace alone, not by works, not by self-righteousness, but by grace alone. Well, in the first century, these Christians, these Christian Jews, they had tr supposedly trusted in Christ, but then these Pharisees crept into the church to try and tell them that circumcision also could save them. So it was part Christ, part circumcision. Well, that circumcision represented works. And God says that those works are the thorns, and the thorns choke out the seed. It chokes out the seed. And so there's no fruit there. It grows up, and the thorns and the cares of this world, and the world is that Jewish world, and thorns and the cares, because they were, they were concerned. What do the Pharisees think of me? Are they going to judge me? Are they going to stone me? Are they going to cast me out? Are they going to burn me? You know, because everybody was being found out for whatever their sin was. You know, whether you were a witch, whether you're struggling with homosexuality, an adulterer, you committed murder, um, you slept with an animal, you, you stole, you lied, you cheated, whatever. Okay, so here are all these things that people were getting cast out of the Jews from the, the company of the Pharisees for, or being put to death, like the woman caught in adultery, right? Well, the Jews believed that their obedience to the Mosaic law was what was going to make them righteous and get them eternal life. And Jesus is saying, uh-uh, no way, Jose. What Jesus was saying is, no, all your righteousnesses are, as I said in Isaiah 64, they're filthy rags. You can't save yourself. It is your heart that's wicked. That's the problem. And the Jews kept saying, no, we can, we can work our way. And we're related to Abraham. That's what's going to give us eternal life. And so Isaiah chapter 32, he says, On the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Uh, Psalm 22, thorns are in the way of the perverse. That's the thorns, thorns of self-righteousness. That's what perversion is. You don't want to talk about true perversion. Perversion is self-righteousness. Perversion is false religion. It's trusting in yourself to save yourself. That's the most grotesque form of perversion ever. You know, we talk about perversion, you know, sexual perversion, whether it's pedophilia or getting down with a beast or whatever. The, God's saying the true perversion, true perversion is self-righteousness. So the seed falls on the, by, by the wayside, the seed falls on rocky ground, the seed falls on the, the thorny ground, but then there's seed that falls on the good ground, the ground, the ground of the heart. There's your ground in Genesis. You see, the ground is cursed in Genesis, but now the ground, because of Christ, it's not cursed anymore. Yeah, we do crappy things in life. We make horrible mistakes. We set bad examples. We are not men and women of integrity. It happens to us all the time. Us. Not just you, not just me, us, period. I don't care what your problem is. Your problem could be gambling. Your problem could be sex. Your problem could be drugs, rock and roll, addictions, pride, gossip, slander, all this stuff. We have all these different problems. But, but the issue is, is we recognize that in spite of our problems, the grace of God has been reigning in our hearts. The Lord reigns over Zion. God reigns. He is the reigning king over the heart, over the conscience. And the cross has removed all that junk. Yeah, we still battle with it. But we are no longer cursed. We're blessed. And the blessing came in the person and finished work of Christ on the cross. So Jeremiah, he says, For so says the Lord to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. In other words, they had the, this hard heart, hard-hearted, and that's what self-righteousness is. It's a hard heart. It's a stony heart. God says, is not my word like a hammer which breaks the rock in pieces? God says, I will take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, a soft heart, a tender heart, a compassionate, a merciful heart. Why are we merciful? If we truly believe God has had mercy on us, if he, we truly believe he has broken up the fallow ground of our heart and he has not sown his seed among thorns, but he made our heart good, not to where it's good of ourselves, but to where he cleansed us 
from all unrighteousness, as First John says, then what he does is he sows that he's sown his seed in our heart, and we too now become merciful. And that's what happens. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Okay, when we are forgiving and forgive others, that shows that we have been forgiven. We know what forgiveness is. We know what mercy is. But when we're jerks to people, when we judge people, that's a probably proof. Probably proof that our heart has not truly had itself broken up by the word of God, the gospel. We haven't been humbled. If we're still judging people, we're still existing in our pride and self-righteousness. So we got to back off from that kind of judgment. Be careful. Yeah. If you spend all your life judging people and trying to point out the faults of people, trying to show people how bad they are by this sin or that sin or the other sin, you know what? That's probably evidence that your heart or my heart is still calloused and hardened and hasn't been broken and humbled. Man, I'll tell you what, when you fall on your face in the very area where you've judged others, it's humbling, isn't it? Yeah. You sit there and point the finger all the time, man. I did that a lot in my life. I pointed the finger and all of a sudden, bam, bam, bam. I'd fall in the same areas. You know, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. Okay, the thorns of self-righteousness. The ground is the ground of the heart. And that's the whole parable of the seed. Okay, it's falling on ground wayside, ground of rocky ground, there's no root, ground of thorny ground, self-righteousness, or the good ground, where it's a tender heart that God has made tender to receive it, and we're like, man, there but for the grace of God go I. We live by grace. We live by mercy. We're excited about it. We're filled with joy. We're not filled with the sorrow of the Old Testament. We're not filled with the sorrow of death and self-righteousness. So what about this cursed ground? What about it? Deuteronomy chapter... Uh, Oh, what is he? No, 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 we got a more, another verse here dealing with this thorns and briars thing, right? Uh, Jeremiah, for so says Jehovah, circumcise yourself, break up your fallow ground. Circumcise yourselves to Jehovah, take away the foreskin of your heart. Well, the Pharisees were concerned with the foreskin down there. <laughs> That's what they were concerned about. They thought that could save you. Okay, God's saying, no, you got a you gotta foreskin on your heart. That has to be removed. Well, the Bible says in Colossians, we are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Think about that one. It's a circumcision that God does. We can't do it. It's impossible. And so he comes along and circumcises our heart. That is, he gives us a new heart, a heart of humility, a heart of grace, a heart that's been forgiven and a heart that forgives. And so in Deuteronomy, or in Hebrews chapter 6, where Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, he says, Some had fallen away for those people. It was impossible to renew them again to the repentance, seeing they crucify the Son of God afresh, put him to an open shame. And then he says, For the earth, earth, there's the ground, which drinks in the rain that comes often upon it and brings forth plants, fit for those by whom it is dressed, receives blessing from God. So there's your good ground, a Christ parable, Right? But then he says, that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is a curse whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, things that accompany salvation, even though we speak in this way. In other words, if you're truly saved, God has given you a soft ground. He's given you a non-religious ground. He's taken away your self-righteousness. You're not in the business of going around pointing fingers. Okay, you're in the business of being merciful just as God has given you mercy. So the cursed ground, Deuteronomy 27, cursed is he who does not confirm all the words of this law to do them and all the people shall say amen. So God says, you got to do it all. If you want to be perfect according to the law of Moses, you got to obey it all. No lying, no gossip, no coveting. Uh, sorry, we're all in a heap of doo-doo because none of us has obeyed the law perfectly. And so God says, curse it, you're cursed. Jeremiah 17, so says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Are you trusting in your works? Are you trusting in your free will? Are you trusting in your efforts, your religion, your tithing, your going to church, your singing in the choir, your preaching? What are you trusting in? Seriously, what are you trusting in? We gotta ask ourselves that question. Cursed is the one who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. But the Bible calls Christ the arm of God, the arm of righteousness, the valiant arm who has gained victory. And we're going to work, look at one last passage in our next section dealing with this curse being swallowed up. And we're going to prove it that the curse has been swallowed up in victory.